been very careful in recent years to when I define mindfulness, I tell people what mindfulness is. Mm -hmm. I say what we used to say a lot of is alert moment to moment to what's really happening, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. And I said, that is, ha and I am saying more clearly than I ever have before. That's the first half of the sentence, which to see clearly moment to moment what's happening out here and what's happening in me in response so that I will be able to respond in a way that does not create suffering for myself or other people. That's the other half of the sentence. It's not mindfulness just to be there. It's mindfulness to be there wisely and be able to respond. And I, I think I could take that one sentence and make it into the whole of what, I, what we are teaching these days, yeah. living in the world. So one of the reasons that I thought, uh, I, I've been using this phrase for a couple of years now, and what I started using it for especially was being suddenly startled by something or find myself uh, in a position, I'm at the Motor Vehicles Bureau or something, and it's taking too long. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I realize that uh, uh, some unwholesome feeling is arising in me. <laughs> but you can't do anything about it. And it, But here in the Motor Vehicles, you can't start meditating. I'm thinking to myself, may I meet this moment clearly? May I meet it as a friend in the Motor Vehicles, on the highway, in line in the supermarket while I'm waiting when they come, while they've gone up to check the results of the, uh, 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 of the mammogram, in any kind of a short interval where it's important for me to get a grip. I actually write this down in my notes and say, explain G-A-G. -G. It stands for get a grip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> because mostly I think when we make mistakes, the mind gets flurried and then we do something impromptu and we act uh, on whatever the impulse is before thinking it over. And I actually make two notes in my book. It says D-A-G-T-I-O. That's my other secret practice, thinking it over. <laughs> what was it? Th thinking? I-O. Is get a grip and think it over. Oh, think it over. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been really impressed recently with how easy it is to get startled. Mm -hmm. I I I have always thought of myself as a very startleable person. I'm easily frightened. You know, among the people who uh, have various kinds of uh, tendencies of mind. My tendency is to worry. When in doubt, worry, it's the worst possible outcome. Mm -hmm. These days, that's a particularly difficult mind state to have. Mm -hmm. okay. Reasons every day to think, ah, oh, with this, this is really, this is terrible. This is all over. This is the worst. And it's going to be awful. It's bad now, and it's going to be awful. And I keep thinking of the point of mindfulness which is really to develop a certain kind of equanimity, not equanimity that's a static equanimity, but an equanimity that says, this is what's happening now. Let's see what happens next. I love, by the way, with all credit to Gil Framstahl, that's his line, but I love it. Let's see what happens next. Mm. It's such a boom to my mind, because it reminds me that there's a next. It's not all over. Mm. So, yeah. I love to think about that. So mm. let's see what happens next. And because right away the mind thinks, ah, oh, this is the news today. It's all over. Not all over. We're still here and we're still making a difference. Mm.